what I'd like to do in this video is to have two examples where we are practicing the calculation of z-scores. So first, I'm asked to calculate the z-score associated with an observation of 170 if we know that the mean is 82 when the standard deviation is or uh, that has a standard deviation of 45. A good habit, again, to get into is to write down what you know. We don't know if these are the mean and standard deviation of a population or of a sample, but let's just assume it's the population. The population mean in this case is 82. The standard deviation for the population is 45. Remember, a z-score is just telling us we have a particular observation of 170. We know the mean. We know the, the standard deviation. We want to know when you calculate a z-score, it's telling you how far is this observation from the mean. And it's not just how far like it's 12. It's telling you how many standard deviations away is that observation. So how many times do I have to add 45 to get 170? So the formula for a z-score is the observation minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. This formula should make sense. If you have no idea why this works, I am going to implore you to stop and think about it and ask questions until you understand why this formula works. The observation is 170. When we subtract the mean of 82, what we're getting is the total distance. So even before I write in anything else, 170 minus 82 is 88. What I just found there with this value of 88, I just found that 170 is 88 away from the mean. It's 88 value. It has an 88. The difference between 170 80, and 82 is 88. That's how far away it is. Now when I divide by the standard deviation of 45, when I take 88 and divide it by 45, I'm finding how many times does 45 go into 88? In other words, how many standard deviations, how many times does that standard deviation go into 88, the difference? So if you take 88 and divide it by 45, you get 1.95 repeating. So 1.95555. And typically how we're going to round is to the hundredths place. So this would be approximately 1.96. That's the z-score. If it's positive, remember z-score is also telling you direction. Since this is a positive z-score, we know we are to the right of the mean. So we could say that if you take 1.96 standard deviations and add it to the mean, you would be at this observation of 170. Here's the second example. Again, we have an observation of 19.2. I have a mean of 27.8 and a standard deviation of 1.2. So let's just write this down. My observation is 19.2. My mean, oops, that should not say x bar. That should just say x. That's the observation. X bar would be the sample mean. My mean, let's assume it's the population, is 27.8, and my standard deviation is 1.2. Even before I get into the calculations, I know that I should get a negative z-score. The reason why, my value is to the left of the mean. If I were to draw a number line, my observation is to the left of the mean. Z-scores also give us direction. If it's a negative z-score, it's telling us it's to the left of the mean. So let's just plug this into the formula. Formula up above here. If I were to take this formula down here, the observation, which is 19.2, subtract the mean, which is 27.8. I know that's going to give me a negative answer, negative number, so I already have that going into the next step. The standard deviation in this case is 1.2. So when I plug that in, 19.2 minus 27.8, that value is a negative 8.6. And when I divide that by 1.2, I'm going to round this also to the hundredths place. Rounding this to the hundredths place, you get negative 7.17. This is the z-score associated with 19.2. It is 7.17 standard deviations to the left of the mean. That negative sign is telling us it's to the left. 
given what we know about z-scores, I should be able to answer, is that observation usual or unusual? Well, since it's further away than two, remember two standard deviations to the left and to the right, since the z-score is larger than two, an absolute value, right? It's larger, it's more negative than negative two. It's more than two standard deviations away, in this case to the left. It's seven, more than seven standard deviations away. In this case, we would say this is an unusual value. Up above, this is not with this is within that two standard deviation threshold. So we would say that this would be this is not unusual. This is within that usual quote unquote usual range.